hi everyone welcome back to my channel it's sunshine how are you so today i'm just very excited because i'm just very excited it's a great day looking good feeling better okay can i get an amen today marks the ending of a decade um not only because it's 2020 but a decade of me eating baby powder i am free that's done with so i'm here to share my top five tips i think it's five i'm here to share my tips on how to stop eating baby powder so i hope that these tips will be helpful to you on your journey to get rid of pica completely out of your life number one decide that you no longer want to do this we have to understand that everything starts as a thought even when most people say, why did you start eating baby powder? I don't know. You probably don't know. It just was a thought in your head and then you acted upon it. You no longer want to poison your body, that you no longer want to feed your insecurities, anxiety, loneliness, whatever it is that you're going through, or even if it's literally a deficiency, you no longer want to feed it with a substance like talc. You don't want to feed it with a substance like chalk, cornstarch, whatever, whoever. Anybody struggling with pica, this video is for you. You have to decide, hey, this is harmful. I don't want to continue doing this. So that's number one. Number two, Ask for help. Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. Help me on my journey. Help me on my way. If you're here, that means you've Googled. That means you've searched on YouTube for someone else struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with. When I say ask for help, that means reach out to someone, try to find someone who is going through the same thing as you. Okay, you're not weird. You're not, I don't know. I don't know what somebody thinks that um, a baby powder eater would look like, but I don't think they think they look like this. They think I'm some like creep in the closet, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm a regular person and I'm one of many that struggle with this on a daily basis. Allow someone close to you to know what you're going through. Now, you may not wanna tell your mom, you may not wanna tell your dad, you may not wanna tell your siblings, but I think it's healthy to have at least one friend that you can confide in, you know? It's never just the best thing to just hold everything in. You have to have an outlet. And even if there's no one close to you, find a stranger. Now, as weird as that may sound, I'm telling you, sometimes a stranger gives you the best advice. The third person you can tell, and you should tell, your doctor, okay? From the looks of my survey, most people don't tell their doctor that they're eating baby powder, okay? And that's the problem. Your doctor needs to know. You may be suffering from some other kind of sickness or ailment and not knowing that this is connected to it, even your dentist. And the last person you can tell, you can tell me, okay? I am available, okay? I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm available 24 seven, but I do my best to interact with everyone in my comment section. You know, while my channel is small, I'm able to do that. You can always still reach out to me through email or DM me on Instagram. I'm always willing to talk, especially about something that I have overcome and that is in my past and something that I can definitely relate to. I don't want everybody to feel how I felt. When I searched for someone on YouTube, all I found was people trying to tell me how to make pineapple upside down baby powder cake. Sharing recipes and all that is not helpful. I am all about evolving and getting better and baby powder could not be a part of my life for the rest of my life. I'm not gonna be a successful actress and model and mom and writer and author eating baby powder in the corner whenever I feel some type of way, okay? so. Number one, I decided this is no longer gonna follow me throughout my life. Number two, I reached out, I talked to my doctor. I told you guys before that I went to therapy for it. It didn't last long because I didn't stay in it long, but it was nice to have someone to confide in. Number three, try, okay? No one is telling you 
that you have to stop today and never do this again. It's kind of impossible because not, ooh, I need to stop banging on the table. It's kind of impossible because not only have you made connections with this substance in your mind, but it's also physical, okay? So it's gonna take a little while to break it. For me, there were steps to it. I felt like I broke the, the spiritual bond that I had with this baby powder. And then, because I was so fed up, the mental one. You have to find ways to keep yourself busy. Now I know you don't wanna ever just keep running from a problem, but what I realized one time I was working at a bookstore, they had baby powder because it was a college bookstore. And then I just realized whenever I was like, nobody was in the store, I felt kind of like bored, I wanted to eat it. The whole time working there, I did not. But that let me realize whenever I'm doing things that are unfulfilling or not satisfying to my soul, it makes me crave baby powder because I just want something to kind of fill that void. So whether it's loneliness, anxiety, depression, whatever it is that you are struggling with, you have to find a different way to deal with it because baby powder is never going to satisfy it. Number four, is to go and get your vitamin levels checked. This is done through a blood test where they can see every single mineral in your body and what's what are you deficient in. So my doctor wanted to check for um, if I was anemic and what my iron levels were, what my vitamin D levels were, and um, I think that's about it. So. I like to just do a little recap. One, we started in our mind. Two, we reached out for help. Three, we're trying, all right? Now four, we're gonna attack the physical part of this, all right? Now you can really try to act on it. Once you, you have to know what you're really fighting in order to fight it. For me, my vitamin D level was at eight. A healthy vitamin D level is probably I don't know, I think he said 23. Um, my iron level was at a 12. I'm anemic. I was anemic. And the other part to that, I was struggling with raging, vicious fibroids that wanted to suck the life out of me, literally. Okay, so there was a lot of physical things going on in my body that allowed me to have this craving, have this urge, have this dependency on something that was not healthy. Even if I did the part with my mind, my spirit, all that, we have to handle things on this plane as well. So um, I was prescribed some vitamin D, it's like 50,000 IUs, I think that's what it's called, which I take twice a week. And then I also take a daily vitamin D and then Every month I go and get iron infusions. Now, I have not craved baby powder since I started getting the iron infusions as well as taking the vitamin D. So, handle your health. No one else is gonna do it for you. No one else is gonna care about your health the way that you do. Your mama may really not want you to die, but she can't force you to do anything at this point. It's gonna sound crazy coming from an anemic girl right iron supplements do a lot more harm than good from my research although every time somebody like landed under my video they'd always suggest go and take some iron pills one they constipate you two sometimes they make you really have to go all the time three they cramp up and hurt your stomach and all of those ailments and side effects are not for no reason it's because it kind of destroys you internally okay there are better ways to get your iron levels up but taking iron supplements is not one of them and also intoxication from it is very easy okay so if i was you i would talk to your doctor my doctors have never suggested for me to take iron pills they strictly just went to the iron infusion number five and my final tip make peace with yourself peace is the greatest thing for the body you have to have peace in order to succeed with anything that you are fighting physically because when you're not at peace your body will do everything that it can to attack whatever those problems are sending out chemicals stress chemicals and whatever to try and soothe you that's the grades and 
powerful part of your mind it knows how to try to cope with things understand that your life is precious and that you are so worth it and that even though you might be struggling with something that you can't share with the world or you don't feel comfortable sharing with the world understand that you're a perfectly normal person a lot of people would like me to believe that something really really wrong like there's something really really wrong with me but there's not let yourself off the hook I think everybody who struggles with this, um, especially if you're trying to stop and you're trying to get help, you have a lot of conflicted feelings inside of yourself. While you're doing this, you know that you're harming yourself, but at the same time, it feels good. It tastes good. It relieves your anxiety. It, I don't know, gives you a high. Whatever it does for you, you're, you're feeling good, but you're doing something bad. You have to be in alignment what you think has to match what you say and what you say has to match what you do so if this is something that you no longer want to do you have to start speaking that i don't eat baby powder anymore i don't eat cornstarch anymore i no longer engage in those kind of activities okay you have to really treat yourself like your own child if there's something that you wanted your child to stop doing if you know i can't say if you're a good or bad parent but if you wanted to do it from a point of love you would talk to your child you would sit them down you would try to understand why they were doing such a thing and how you can stop it god puts a lot of emphasis on your words on what you say because it's powerful it has the power to control your life so go ahead and paint a beautiful life with your tongue not one where you're you're always blaming yourself for hurting others do something good with your words knowing that when it goes out it sends this vibration and it permeates the whole entire world you know to go ahead and work it's magic go ahead and create life and go ahead and prosper someone and go ahead and prosper yourself okay i think that the main source of bad habits like eating baby powder not just from the physical but this the the other emotional parts of it just like any other self-loathing behavior you feel like you deserve it and i'm here to tell you that you don't okay whether you believe it <laughs> my makeup is too damn cute to cry whether you believe it or you know it or not you deserve to be here i deserve to live you deserve to live why are we doing this i didn't have the mental strength to do that and i started uh, <clears throat> I started my YouTube channel because I couldn't find anybody to to reach out to in this situation. And I knew that if I said something and I spoke up, there would be others. Other people would say, me too. This is a video about an addiction I have. My addiction to eating baby powder you're worth it you're worth the effort let's end this video with the sunshine statement if you haven't memorized it by now why is you here i'm just kidding go and watch that video i think it's pretty you know nice and jazzy written by this girl come on troops let's say it together i am mm. healthy, I am healthy and whole being impeccable, being impeccable with my word is my goal i do not use unhealthy habits to satisfy my soul i do it stress and anxiety in a healthy way i do yoga laugh or sage it away my body is my temple obtaining and maintaining optimum health is my goal when i am kind to me i can be kind to you so i can be a ray of sunshine through and through all right so be encouraged you are worthy baby powder bye <laughs> yeah i'm so happy about everything I'm so grateful gratitude will take you a very long way all right take care